Hello guys, welcome back to Civil Engineering YouTube channel. Please subscribe our channel for daily civil engineering videos. In today's lecture, we are going to discuss the shear force and bending moment diagram. That why these two terms are very important in the design of any kind of beam or slab or any flexure member. But before going into the discussion, I would like to request you guys that please subscribe to a channel that I have given the link in the description known as Traveling Diaries. So now we can come to our a topic a bit about the shear force and bending moment so why these two terms are very important to understand because in order to design any kind of beam we need these two terms one is called the shear force diagram or shear forces the second one is the bending moment as we draw the bending moment diagram for the flexure members in order to design our beam according to the load demand so we will explain this with the help of an example. We consider this is a simply supported beam with, where, where there is a uniformly distributed load of W acting on this beam. Now what happens if I draw the free body diagram of this beam. So I will draw two reference lines. For example, these are the two reference lines. This one is for shear force and this one is for bending moment. So these these two lines will show the supports here and this one here and now if I draw the shear force diagram here V in kilonewton so we will draw it like this because there is a simply supported beam in uniformly distributed load so the half load will be taken by this and half load will be taken by this so now if we draw the shear force diagram and if you take this is a zero zero reference line so we will see that our shear force will be maximum at this point and then it will decrease 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 up to zero here at this point and then again it comes down down here into the negative so we see here that there is a maximum there is a maximum positive shear force here and here is a negative shear force so now why this shear force is very important here to understand because it will help help us to understand where we need to provide the shear reinforcement because for shear forces we need to provide the shear reinforcement so we also have to provide two kind of reinforcement one is called is the transverse reinforcement this is known is also known as the transverse reinforcement this is also known as the shear reinforcement or shear reinforcement in order to resist the shear forces because we see that this shear force is maximum at this region and also it is maximum at this region so this region is very critical in the shear also this region is very critical in the shear this depends on the shear diagram for example i just took an example of simply supported beam to explain it in a very simple case so depending on the shear diagram we have maximum shear forces here in this region and also we have maximum shear forces in this region while this region if i draw it with a with a maybe with a blue color so this region is not that much important in shear and we can ignore this region yeah we can ignore this region in shear design so we don't need to provide a shear reinforcement or maybe we provide only a minimum shear reinforcement requirement according to the codes but this region is critical and also this region is critical so we must have to provide the shear reinforcement according to the codes this is a critical region so now according to the shear force diagram we will provide the shear reinforcement in this region and also in this region in order to take the shear load so that's why we need to draw the shear force diagram in order to understand where we need to provide the shear reinforcement and the shear reinforcement will look like this for example if I draw the cross section so this is the cross section so the shear reinforcement will be a stirrup like it will look like this like in this way so these are the stirrups we call them literal reinforcement shear reinforcement or stirrups are sometimes ties in the columns so these are static reinforcement to use for shear design now where we need the bending moment 
So now again, this is for bending moment, the second, second reference line in kilonewton meter. And if I consider this is a zero, zero, zero reference line. So the bending moment diagram for this load, for this W load acting on this beam will be like, like in this way. Or maybe if I draw it more accurately, so it will be zero, zero and maximum here at the midpoint because the midpoint is away from the support so we will have maximum bending moment at the mid region or we can say that this region is very critical now at the bending moment so this region is known as critical for bending moment critical while this region if I define this region we see here it is very near to zero so this region we can ignore in our bending design because there is no such high bending moment acting in this region and also in this region. So how much is this length? This depends on the different code requirement but bending moment diagram can explain you where you have maximum bending moment. For example the red line was the maximum bending moment we see here that the maximum bending moment was here. So this bending moment really should be taken into account bending maximum. And we have to design the reinforcement and we have to design the reinforcement the area of the reinforcement according to the this maximum bending moment so now in this case we will have here if i consider this is a cross section of the beam so the bending reinforcement will be provided here along the at the extreme bending zone because we always have tension in the bottom zone while if we draw this is the neutral axis So here is the compression zone, C in this zone is known as the tension zone, T. So in tension we always provide the reinforcement in order to take the bending stresses. So, so in order to provide the bending reinforcement we will look into the bending moment diagram and we see that this region is critical so we have to provide the bending reinforcement along the length of the beam but this region should must be provided with the bending reinforcement and how much reinforcement we require depending upon the maximum moment so this is the um, this is the things that i wanted to explain that we need the shear force in order to define or design our shear reinforcement or the stirrups and we need the bending moment diagram or the bending moment in order to define or, or provide the bending reinforcement bending reinforcement or sometimes we call them is a longitudinal reinforcement longitudinal reinforcement in the beams in order to take the bending moments so these are the different names for the reinforcement so hope you guys understand the main difference between these two terms and they are very important in the design of any kind of slave any kind of beam or other flexural member or we can see bending member that is subjected to bending you must have to design it for sure and also for bending moment so hope you guys understand and don't forget to subscribe my channel and also you can find the another channel where i have the link given in the description named with traveling diaries so thank you guys and don't forget to subscribe my new channel thank you for watching my video and Good luck with your learnings.